I, I don't I don't have the well, white man thing of I'm just like who wouldn't want to hear me talk for three hours about anything like I don't right. I'm not allowed to be boring mm. I have to be twice as good to get half as much respect do you do, right. do, do you see that prejudice right. I have a am I boring like that's the thing like I don't think about my life that way I don't think oh I have to be twice as funny or like I don't think I think on YouTube because I'm not a comedian I didn't I didn't go to stage work but for me on YouTube I just feel like I have to be myself and look I garnered an audience and look that audience signed up for Patreon and look that audience like even Andrew Schultz and all those people they're I don't know I don't I feel like women in comedy or in fields that are like male dominated can have a tendency to take on insecurities of the people around them. So I think it's an insecurity of the audience if they don't like you because you're a woman. But I think the women think it's their insecurity if the men don't like them. But I think if men don't like me because I'm a woman, that's their problem and has nothing to do with me. So usually I'm just like, whoop, there it goes. Like when Destiny's audience first met me and they were like hating on me, everyone's like, this is misogyny, Brittany. They hate you because you're a woman. I'm like, leave them alone. It'll be fine. They hate me because I'm different from the thing they love, which is a man. No biggie, not a big deal. And like they think, oh, Destiny's only talking to Brittany because he wants to fuck her, all these things. But that's not really true because like Destiny talks to a lot of people. So it's like it's like layered, right? It's like so layered. It's so much more than that. But the audience needs time to also understand that the thing that's coming into their space that they love isn't being threatened. Like I'm not here to change destiny. I'm not here to ruin anything and vice versa. Me bringing people onto my channel is not going to change my channel. Like my channel is mine. The other day destiny was asked, um, hey, are you going to talk out like talk against like say something against Lauren Southern? And he was like, why? Lauren Southern's her own person. Like I'm not her daddy. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not accountable for what she says. And that's the thing. Destiny should not be accountable for who his or what his friends say or the people he knows says. I don't want to do that either on my channel. I don't want people to be like, oh, Brittany talked to so-and-so. So Brittany must condone their ideas. Like what the fuck? Grow up. No, I just want to be able to see the humanity in everybody. And if you don't want to see the humanity in everyone, that's on you, fuckface. That has nothing to do with me. So all these like trans people that are mad at Destiny, if you don't want to see the humanity in Destiny, fuck off. This isn't about you then. This is about this is about him and his desires. And maybe it's about you in the sense that like you're making it about you, but it's not really about you. If you think people don't have the right to talk about you on the Internet or explore ideas when you're a content creator, a public content creator, you're living in a fucking delusional world. You're right. right. Yeah, 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 bro, 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 bro. Stop. No, Joy says you're such a pussy. It pisses me off, brother Mark. That was not Mark. That was my other brother. The other day, my little brother, I was sitting next to him on the couch. Actually, Mark wasn't even in that room, I don't think. But it was me, one brother, one brother. Oh, no. Maybe it was all three of us, actually. It was like all of us were on the couch. So all like all of us were on the couch. We were watching the dogs be dogs. And my little brother, just like my youngest, he goes, he just says that. He's like, God, you're such a pussy. It pisses me off. I'm like, you're pussy, bro. Because we were listening to high-pitched dog sounds and the, it just bothers my ears. And that's what I'm saying. Like, look, my little brothers, the way we talk to each other, we're like, you're pussy, bro. You're pu Shut the fuck up. Oh, I almost said a slur. <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we just talk very openly with each other because we know we're not serious. If we were serious, then we'd be like, oh, we're changing the, like, the energy in this room has shifted, sir. Are you serious now? Are we fighting for real? Are we fighting for fucking real? No? Okay, my bad. My bad. We're good. You know what I'm saying? Um... Takes notes on a boat says people don't realize how much freedom of speech is under attack from so-called fact checkers, misinformation and hate speech all under the guise of TOS violations and protecting people. But that's that's everything. That's normal. That's what I'm saying. Nothing unique is happening right now. Every every past like generational like cultural bubble has gone through this. Right. Everyone wants to control everyone. That's why we've been doing it forever since the beginning of time. Depending on how you uh, think the world came about or why humans are here, whether it's Cain and Abel or Adam and Eve wanting to control each other and like God wanting to control them or fucking evolution happening and the Neanderthals and the humans and their mating habits and them. No matter how you want to process it, humans have always been about conquering other humans slash controlling other humans. That's why trans people are so delusional or the left, not trans people, but the left, the LGBT left people are so delusional if they think they are not trying to control people just as much as anyone else. It is absolutely delusional that you think you're trying to save the world by limiting people and you're no different than the conservatives who are trying to save the world by limiting people. Get your head out of your fucking gay ass. Talking. Right. Oh, you know, you, hey, hey, I'm going to give you that dub.
I'm going to give you that dub. That's a dub. Hey, hey you was right. I don't have that. My, my oh, my God. My experience in, in the stand-up comedy scene uh, is that white women are the worst. Okay? <laughs> like, uh, white female comics are just the worst. Okay? It's just like. They're not great. They're not great. Though I love Kathy, and I do like Chelsea, and I do like Whitney. So fucking annoying is unbelievable. They w- and I like them all regardless of their bad ideas. Do you see what I'm saying? I want to lecture you about it. I had a white woman, a female comic come up to me and be like, um, you know that bit that you do about like spending some time in Ethiopia? And- um, I don't get why people like Joe Rogan so much. Maybe because he sometimes has interesting people invited. No, we like Joe Rogan because he's a real person. Don't you guys see that he's just a person? That's why he's liked because he's not trying to sell you something in an obvious way. He's not fucking Anderson Cooper or Tucker Carlson. He's he's just himself and it's likable. <coughs> like, don't you see that Joe Rogan is funny and interesting? He lives a very like lived life. He's peaceful. He came from nothing and made something of himself. He was just telling Mr. Beast that he did his podcast for no money. It cost him money for like six years. That's what Kim Kardashian's trying to say too. Kim Kardashian's trying to say like, you guys don't want to work. You have to work. Mr. Beast said it too. Nobody actually wants to work. Like they, they want to work, but they don't have the, it's not in them. Gary V would say you don't have the genetics. So Gary V would say you need the genetics to be a successful businessman or entrepreneur. And I agree. I agree that out of all my siblings, there's a reason why I'm the only one doing this job. I'm telling you. I'm telling you.